Something is changing in Russia. Something in the way it projects itself abroad. Only war could re decide really what, what, who is the boss. That is the question of who rules the world. And in the way the people view themselves. Russian civilization is a culture of heroes and warriors. There is a battle going on here for the soul of this country. We have our special Russian truth that you need to accept. And for the very concept of what is real and what is not. This country has changed drastically since I first started coming here in the mid-1990s, when the streets were crammed with battered larders, and for most people, foreign travel was a distant dream. But here's the paradox. Even as life has become more westernised, so more and more people seem to be turning their backs on the West, or at least their government is trying hard to push them in that direction. Recently, state-controlled TV beamed these pictures into the nation's living rooms. A report on mass exercises in preparation for possible nuclear war. Locate your nearest bomb shelter now, the presenter says, before it's too late. The spectre of war casts a long shadow over Russia. In Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, nearly half a million people lie buried in this cemetery alone. They're remembered here as heroes who saved the Soviet Union from destruction. Valentina Nikolaevna is too young to remember the war herself, but she remembers only too well how the Soviet Union collapsed and her pension with it, and she knows who she thinks is to blame. Who went to the south? America. They always go to the south. Также в Сирии война, кто там воюет? Та же Америка, хотя они отказываются, правильно от этого? Наши же самолёты не бомбят мирных жителей, правильно? The war in Syria, the conflict in Ukraine, these are seen very differently here. State-controlled TV feeds viewers a diet of war and crisis abroad in which the West is cast as the aggressor. Now, the news bulletins are talking about the prospect of a direct confrontation, something unthinkable since the end of the Cold War. In St. Petersburg, officials have drawn up plans for bread rationing. Few are taking this seriously. No one is stockpiling food. But the siege of Leningrad is seared into the folk memory of this city. Svetlana Bogdanova keeps a memento of those dark, hungry days locked in a bookcase. 125 grams of bread, a day's ration, saved by her grandfather in 1942. Talk of rationing today is nonsense, Svetlana says, but still, it has a psychological effect. Это просто попытка испугать людей. Я думаю, что да. Я думаю, что может быть нужно показать о том, как может быть плохо, для того, чтобы посмотрите, сейчас не так плохо, а он совсем хорошо. For centuries, Russia has wrestled with an existential question: to face east or west. The collapse of the Soviet Union was not, it turned out, the end of history. Underneath the trappings of the capitalist economy, Western-style liberalism has struggled to take root. In Russia, things are not always entirely what they seem. Students go paintballing at the weekend. It's organized by an opposition party. But the party in question is, in fact, loyal to the Kremlin. And paintballing is part of a wider, 
government-approved program of military patriotic education. We offer a wide range of military aligned subjects. Some of them are connected with like cold weapons, so it's knife combat, knife throwing, it's throwing of military spades, also live ammunition, so we go to uh, shooting ranges or sometimes to uh, military encampments where we can shoot on nature. When, I, when you watch Russian television, it, it seems like people are preparing for some kind of confrontation with the West. Does it feel like that to you? Absolutely, of course. We are preparing for the confrontation with the West, but most of this confrontation happens on cultural and informational and value level. But uh, this warrior spirit is one of the principal values of Russian civilization. Russian civilization is a culture of heroes and warriors. So it's a cultural warfare, whether we like it or not. 20 years ago, when I first came to Russia, it seemed like people liked the West. You're absolutely right. And it didn't do us any good. And our great country dissolved without warfare, without open conflict, because we started to love different people and different culture, more than our own. Do you think yeah. it's really possible that you mean you're, you're, you're training people with live fire as well? Is it really possible that that could ever be used in a conflict with the West? Yes, of course it is possible. And uh, now there are local conflicts, you know, like Ukraine and other people. And uh, me and my comrades, and unfortunately even some of our cadets already have taken part. And it is a conflict. Make no mistake, not between Ukraine. In Ukraine, it's a conflict between Russia and the West, of course. Yeah. Because uh, Ukrainian army has Western equipment, Western weapons, and Western ideology. But are you them. saying you took part in, in Ukraine? I did. You did, as a volunteer? Yep. Right. None of the students we spoke to said they were volunteering to fight in Ukraine. They're in their late teens, early 20s, all of them born in the post-Soviet period. And they seemed unconvinced by the talk on TV of a looming conflict. Большинство из наших, скажем так, не смотрит телевизор. Да. Почему? Не нужно этого делать в России. Да, у, нас, у нас в России да. это не надо делать, поэтому мы его и не смотрим просто. Не, не смотрим телевизор. Вообще. СМИ очень сильно нагнетают обстановку, и это уже информационная война. Что для вас означает Запад? Одним словом. Капитализм. Капитализм. Да, больше ничего добавить. Больше ничего. Я думаю, возможности для некоторых. Возможности, ага. Культура, культура интересует. Да, да. другая культура. И да, может быть, все-таки когда-нибудь это сотрудничество, потому что живем все на одной планете и да. нет смысла воевать. Угу. Almost as soon as he came to power, Putin began taking control of Russia's TV stations. That process is now complete. What you see on television today is either sanctioned by or sympathetic to the Kremlin. Truth has become subordinate to political expediency. <laughs> to support this difficult balancing act, an entire philosophical framework has been constructed. One of its chief architects is Alexander Dugin, thinker and ideologue who's under US sanctions for his alleged involvement in Russia's annexation of Crimea and the war in eastern Ukraine. The truth is the question of belief. And postmodernity shows that every so-called truth is the matter of believing. So we believe in what we do, we believe in uh, what we say, and that is the only way to define the truth. So we have our special Russian truth that you need to accept as something that maybe is not your truth. Even if it's not true. But if the truth is relative, it, that doesn't mean that the truth doesn't exist. Dugin's philosophy is known as Eurasianism. It holds that Orthodox Russia is neither East nor West, but a separate and unique civilization a civilization engaged in a battle for its rightful place among world powers. His work has become increasingly influential among Russia's political and military elite. If United States doesn't want to, to, to start a war, you should recognize, United States should recognize openly for all humanity, all mankind, that 
the United States is not anymore a unique master. And the, the situation in Syria, on Ukraine and uh, uh, anywhere else, uh, that's only the case to prove that. So, so Ukraine and Syria are all about proving to America yes. that they're not the boss. Yes, absolutely. And Russia says, no, you are not boss. You are not anymore boss. That's very serious. It is, if if we, we insist on multipolarity and if behind us there is nuclear weapon and the iron will to defend, for example, in the little case of Assad, defend Assad. Assad is principally not because we have so much interest there. That is the question of who rules the world. That is but, the problem. What, so that is that's possible war. Only war could re decide really what uh, who is the boss. Dugin's bellicose doublethink is not aimed solely at the West. There's a message for internal consumption too, and it is this. There's no such thing as universal liberal values. There is no inherent contradiction in a democracy that allows no dissent. In the shadow of the walls of the Kremlin, Russia's dwindling band of activists keep alive the memory of Boris Nemtsov, the opposition politician who was gunned down on this spot last year. It's cold and lonely work. Совершенно точно сидит Путин в Кремле. Совершенно точно путинское телевидение врет. Most Russians don't really believe that nuclear war with the West is coming. Perhaps their leaders don't believe it either. But then they probably don't really believe in the postmodern Orwellian state. But the more the lie is repeated, the more it risks morphing into some sort of reality. Well, to unpick some of these complicated and contradictory issues, I've been speaking to two Russians, Alexander Baunov of the think tank, the Carnegie Moscow Center, and Yekaterina Schulman, who's a political scientist at the Russian Civil Service Academy. Yekaterina Schulman, let me start by asking you, do people generally believe what they see on Russian TV? On one hand, people absolutely believe what they are told. They believe that uh, state channels transmit the official position, the position of the state. Uh, on the other hand, uh, they are not looking for news as such. They are looking to decipher this system of signals. Uh, who is on air today and who was yesterday? What, for example, what set of terms is being used this season as opposed to the previous season? Uh, what is the intonation? What is the choice of words? All this is important to understand because it prophesizes certain changes in the future. And, and nevertheless, though, uh, Alexander Baunov, yep. uh, when it comes to events like events in Syria, events in Ukraine, People do see them differently from, from the way we see them in the West, don't they? I mean, the, the, the Ukrainian war was considered a, 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 as a defensive war here, not just by the Kremlin, but by the population as well. Whatever happens in Ukraine is considered to be the intrusion uh, inside the Russian, uh, Russia itself. So something that from outside uh, is like an aggression and for the international standard it is, for the Russian mentality here is a defense. Mm. They defend their own space. The external audience um, is obviously the West, um, and the West is certainly sitting up and taking notice. Is this um, the effect that the Kremlin wants to have? Are they having the desired the effect? The external audience is not only the West, it's also the developing world, and uh, probably it's now a uh, more important audience outside Russia than the West, because the West uh, is considered to be lost by Russian politicians, by Putin. Uh, you never will please them, so stop trying. Uh, it's not important. What is important is to show that 
we are powerful to the rising, huge, developing world consisting of China, India, Latin America, Africa, and so on. Uh, I mean, it seems clear that yeah. um, the Kremlin uh, no longer looks to the West, to Western liberalism as an inspiration. But <clears throat> is Western liberalism that, that's also... That's clear enough. Yes. That's clear mm -hmm. enough. But is it also dead in Russian society? Uh, what I know is that uh, all Russians, uh, those that would name themselves liberals, those that would name themselves, uh, I don't know, Orthodox Christian, they share this underlying anxiety, this low level of trust, this uh, low level of belief in the future, uh, this uh, trend to rather keep by the devil you know than trust to the devil you do not know. This is indeed our shared set of values. Uh, you, you mentioned the projection of strength abroad. There is a projection of strength abroad. But in the core of the system, is uh, they are very uncertain. There, there's a feeling of uncertainty because there are so many issues unresolved. And the first one is the transition of the power. Who there will is, come after Putin? Exactly. There is no system beyond one person. It's, it's very personal. It's more personal than, than in Soviet time. And then, of course, there is a fear based on the experience of the 20th century by moving something, by changing something to destroy the country because they tried several times. And every time they tried to move the system from this monarchy or quasi-monarchy, they lost the country. So the good idea <coughs> seems to be to try to make the time stop. <laughs> uh, somehow, and meanwhile, yes. to distract attention by uh, foreign adventures in places where this is the, this is Russian names. conservatism. It's not natural conservatism of the of the smoothly moving society like British one. There's no real conservatism. It's fear of change. It's fear, it's of, fear of the future. Of change. It's fear yeah. of tomorrow. It's not a conservatism. It's, it's not a love, a real love for the past. It's a fear of the future. Exactly. Alexander Barnov, Ekaterina Shulman, thank you both very much. Thank you.